This Mars One uh, operation, I think this is really, really cool. So this is a project that's aiming to send volunteers on a one-way trip to Mars. You will die on Mars if you want to go. It's going to be the first private unmanned mission to the Red Planet. So there's two things. We're going to send people one way, and they're building a reality show around that. And it's going to be this giant crowd-funded thing. Pretty cool. And then they're also sending unmanned missions there to do some other stuff. Okay, so Mars One has secured Lockheed Martin Space Systems and Surrey Satellite Technology for an unmanned mission launching in 2018, which involves a robotic lander and a communication satellite. So basically, they're going to set up some stuff so that when these people get to Mars, there's something there. The unmanned mission will also carry the winning projects from an experiment contest because they're going to be building this giant reality show uh, around it. It's going to be the first privately funded planetary exploration mission. Funding will come from sponsorships, exclusive partnerships, the reality TV show, and Indiegogo. We know a little something about that around here at TYT. Uh, the trip takes about seven months. The first pioneers could land on Mars in about 2025. And after the first humans arrive in 2025, the plan is to send additional crews every two years. But again, once you get there, you cannot come back. Oh, this is what the colony ev eventually will look like, certainly not the day they get there. Now we've got a little bit of the habitat. That looks pretty good, right? Like very 2001-ish. Uh, so this whole thing I think is really cool. And you know, we were just talking about all the social media stuff, but this seems like technology that's actually good in pushing the frontiers of what humans are capable of doing. Um, would either one of you like to go to, on a one-way trip to Mars? Desi? <laughs> Absolutely you, not. No? You don't no, want to do no, it? No, Neither one of you. No, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But what? also, I would want to make sure that you actually survive the trip. And, you know, there's so many issues. So you'd be on the second or third wave. So you'll, <laughs> let, you'll let the guinea yeah. pigs go right. first. Yeah, let the, let the guinea pigs go first. Because there's so many issues with this particular uh, trip that they're planning, so I'm not exactly sure whether or not they really will get there. This particular, the privately funded with the reality show is a great is way it? to make money, right. but I don't know if they actually will have the capability to get the technology in place to do it. I mean, right. it's really difficult to land on Mars. You've got radiation issues, crossing and living on Mars. You've got issues with food, with water, with whatever you're going to carry for your fuel. You know, there are all kinds there's of, of stuff. there's tons of stuff. Yeah. There, was a, there was a big Mars conference back in May, and there's some great articles that were written about all of the specific difficulties of trying to land a payload with humans on it on Mars. Yeah. And right now it can't be done. I think it'd be great if they could figure out how to do it. Right. But so we're so talking before, about it, so it's great. I mean, it's working. Yeah. It's working, working already. Right. Yeah. And they've yeah, gotten precisely. people, you know, you had to, I think, pay 40 or 50 bucks in order to be one of the people to apply to go on Mars. So right. that was a great money making opportunity and, and right there. And literally hundreds of thousands of people, over 200,000 people uh, applied for this. So before we get into the specifics of what they're going to do on Mars, what, what do you make of the people that are willing to do this? That someone's going to say, I, I will potentially die en route, potentially live there for a year and die of loneliness or lack of well, oxygen? Like, what do you make of the person that can do it? To me, my first reaction is to think, hmm, who is going to go? And I think, well, they're probably not going to get scientists or people like that that would actually be able to study and to translate what it is that they're seeing and communicate every so day back. So you get like a crazy cowboy, well, like well, a space is it, cowboy. Well, is it going to be, you know, people in prison? Is it going to be people that have a <laughs> terminal illness? Is it going to be people that are that want a death wish? I mean, so it, you don't so, think there's just a scientist that says, I believe in this so no. much that I'm willing to die right, for it. Right, because yeah. usually scientists have dedicated their whole lives. I doubt they're going to dedicate maybe a few years of their life and then die off when I, it just doesn't seem r real to me. Like you said, maybe if people go and it's successful and people are living there and then maybe they do find a way to get them back off and back to Earth then maybe, sure, you're going to have the scientists and, and, and the people that go up there that can go, oh, okay, I can go up there for four months like Space Station and, and do some research and we'll, we'll come back. You yeah. know? But a one-way ticket? No. Who's going to bury you? Who's going you know, to want to be there? Who's gonna, the second wave guy is going right. to bury you. I'm, they're gonna send, then they're going to send a ditch digger on the second wave, I think. Uh, but ha, have you guys seen the movie uh, Contact with Jodie Foster? Yes. So you remember Matthew McConaughey says to her before she goes on the trip, he says, why you? Why you? And she says, well, this could be the most powerfully impactful moment in human civilization. So I do think there are some scientists would that, that would be willing to do it. I mean, I sort of want to see what happens with the show. 
Exactly. You know, let's see what happens with this <laughs> but, thing. But, but didn't but, they you know. say in the article that people who donate to Indiegogo has some say on what happens in the reality show? Right. So you can tell they the guy, to vote. Right. Like, like okay, hey, so you go walk outside without your mask <laughs> on. What ha let's see what happens. Right. They're going to have punked on Mars. Right. Um, yeah. So let's talk about that. So I think one of the things that's really cool about this is this isn't just the government uh, deciding to do this. This is privately funded, and NASA is going to get involved in some ways, well, and I'm sure, involved, yeah, yeah. they have to be, and of course all the, the, you know, the Russian space station and all that, and the international thing and everything. But I think the idea of privately funding something and then building a reality show around it, this seems like you know, the world crowdsourcing something, which I think actually is, is pretty cool. That model, uh, you know, using this particular thing as a model for, hey, how do we uh, undergo major projects that have a global backing behind them, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, but I can think of other things that are probably more plausible <laughs> that it would actually go for. Not that this on isn't this planet, on perhaps? this planet, yeah. you know, maybe some actual like difficult problems and challenges that we have to deal with, and I'm sure there are a couple that we can think of yeah. that money would go well for. I'm glad that they're doing this. I think it uh, excites people about STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, math. It, it excites kids. Uh, I don't know that these are the right people to do it, but at least they're getting the conversation going. Yeah. And so for that, I'm glad that they're doing so, it. So joking aside about what's going to happen to the people when they get up here, you know, every science fiction movie ever, from 2011, Alien, I mean, the list goes on and on, about these people exploring the frontiers of space, they always and poorly. Oh, they always. always, you know, they meet an alien that kills them, or they go crazy, or you know, they start seeing things, Prometheus. or Prometheus. I mean, yeah. e literally yeah. every movie. Um, so, have we already sort of uh, have our imaginations already predicted how this whole thing will? Well, obviously, out. if it's starting with a one-way ticket, you know it is not <laughs> going to end well. Right. So if you're not that smart to even think down the line that it could end well, then you have yeah. an issue. But yeah. then maybe you should go. But, you know, I think it, I, I do hate the word reality television show because I it's think of be Snooki and, yeah. and, you know, Dancing with the Stars. No, this is it, it, it's, it's almost like... <laughs> we, uh, I know, well, can we nominate some people? Some, go, some, some people think. would actually fund that. Well, let's think. If we're doing a one-way trip, who should we send? Chris Brown? Carl oh, Rose. yeah. Carl Rose. <laughs> Give, me one more. Give me one more. The Koch brothers. One more. Come Snooki on. Would Snooki. Be, Snooki yeah. would be a good one. All right. Some all right. of those reality people. But I think it's more of a documentary than a, than a reality yeah. show. Yeah, you know, when you, when you think of the word, do, you know, yeah. reality, I think of, you know, Housewives. people Real sleeping with each other <laughs> right. and running out on Mars in the middle of the night, drunk, and, uh, yeah. you know. I, that would not be good. interesting to watch, though. Yeah, would that be. would be something. All right, well, there's obviously going to be Justin plenty. Bieber. plenty Sorry. We could send Bieber, too. There's going to be plenty more to talk about that. So we will cover it from now until uh, they get there.